Hello and welcome to Courts this week on Live Law. I'm Tanya Pandey and I'm here with our latest update of last week's important judgments from courts across India. We'll begin the episode with judgments from the Supreme Court and then cover high courts and other courts. The Supreme Court on 16th March allowed the state of Tamil Nadu to implement 50% reservation for in-service doctors in super specialty courses in neat SS admissions for the academic year 2021 to 22 the bench of justices l nageshwar rao and v r gavai vacated the interim order which was passed in 2020 to stop the implementation of reservation in super specialty seats in the judgment the bench noted that no case was made out for continuing the interim protection granted in 2020 The bench had reserved orders on vacating the interim order on March 14th. In connection with the bail plea of Hamir Wayuddin, accused in the serial blasts in multiple Rajdhani Express and other trains in 1993, the Supreme Court on 14th March directed the special judge of the designated court under Tada Ajmer to endeavor to complete the trial by 30th November 2022. A bench of justices D Y Chandrachur and Surikant observed that in pursuance of the court's previous orders the trial has commenced and process of recording evidence is also underway the bench further directed that any request of petitioner for grant of facilities as are admissible in law in terms of jail manual shall be duly considered the court had in december 2021 directed the court to expedite the trial and to report the progress which has been made to the top court preferably by march 2022 The Supreme Court has observed that a letter's patent appeal cannot be entertained against orders which do not have the traits and trappings of finality. An order of the single judge though may cause some inconvenience to one of the parties or to some extent some prejudice to one of the parties, but it cannot be treated as a judgment under clause 15 of letter's patent of the Calcutta High Court. The bench of justices L Nageshwar Rao and B R Gavai observed The Supreme Court on 16th March stayed the award of costs of rupees 8 lakh imposed on Securities and Exchange Board of India by the Securities Appellate Tribunal. A bench of justices DY Chandrachur and Surikant issued notice in SEBI civil appeal filed challenging the order passed by SAT. The issue arose from an order passed by SEBI's whole time member directing certain entities to disgorge the unlawful gains earned through stock market fraud. SAT had held SEBI's order to be in violation of the principles of natural justice and had further imposed on SEBI costs of rupees 8 lakh payable within 8 weeks from the date of the impugned judgment. Failure to pay rent may have civil consequences but is not a penal offence under the Indian Penal Code, the Supreme Court observed while quashing an FIR registered against a tenant by a landlord. The court was considering an appeal against the Allahabad High Court's order. that refused to quash an FIR registered for the offence of cheating under section 450 and that of misappropriation under section 403 IPC while quashing the FIR the court observed that the question as to when the appellant vacated the property and arrears of rent etc are left open to be decided in civil proceedings the supreme court has observed that existence of a prior concert and prearranged plan has to be established for convicting accused by invoking section 34 of the Indian Penal Code in this case the appellant was concurrently convicted under section 302 read with section 34 of the Indian Penal Code the prosecution case was that one arjun stabbed the deceased with his knife and the appellant was also involved in this crime as he brandished his knife and threatened to assault a person who was accompanying the deceased before the apex court the appellant contended that section 34 of the indian penal code was not attracted as the prior concert and prearranged plan to kill the deceased had not been established the bench of justices ajay rastogi and abhay soka allowed the appeal and observed that common intention contemplated by section 34 of ipc presupposes prior concert and requires meeting of minds let us now go over important judgments from the high courts and other courts Wearing of hijab is not a part of essential religious practice in Islamic faith and thus is not protected under Article 25 of the Constitution the Karnataka High Court has held on 15th March a full bench of the High Court further held 
that prescription of school uniform by the state is a reasonable restriction on the student's rights under Article 25, and thus the government order issued by the Karnataka government dated February 5th is not violative of their rights. Accordingly, the court has dismissed the petitions filed by Muslim girl students challenging the action of government PU colleges in denying their entry for wearing a hijab. The Karnataka High Court has held that the permission from a trial court is not necessary for renewal of passport when the proceedings are stayed by a higher court. The court directed the regional passport officer to consider a woman's application for renewal of her passport without insisting upon a facilitative order from the concerned criminal court before whom a case registered against her is pending. A single judge bench of Justice Krishna has diction, while allowing the petition noted that the right to travel is an inviolable human right enshrined under Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but added that justice in the case warrants a stipulation by this court that the petitioner shall not travel abroad without leave of the criminal court concerned, regardless of the passport being issued or not, not issued. In a significant decision, the Kerala High Court's Division Bench of Chief Justice S. Manikmai and Justice Shaji P. Chali on 17th March observed that political parties are not legally liable to establish an internal complaints committee as per the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act 2013, also known as the Posh Act, since there is no employer-employee relationship among its members. The court also held that film production houses have the responsibility to form an internal complaints committee as per the Posh Act, observing that each film unit in an industry is an establishment and an ICC needs to be constituted for that purpose. Over five months after the Bombay High Court issued certain guidelines barring media reporting and uploading of judgments to maintain anonymity of parties, the bench of Justice Gautam Patel clarified that its directions were case-specific and not applicable to all matters under the Protection of Women from Sexual Harassment Act, that is the Posh Act 2013, and its rules. Justice Patel also said that only the Chief Justice or a full court could issue such rules, which might also need to be notified in the official gazette. The Madras High Court dismissed a plea made by the wife of controversial PUBG gamer Madan, seeking the defreezing of her bank account at Access Bank Limited. Justice M. Nirmal Kumar observed that there are far-ranging allegations against both the accused, including misappropriation of funds collected in the name of COVID relief and making revenue from the live streaming of PUBG gaming videos with obscene commentary and filthy language against women and teenage subscribers. The court observed that notice to the accused is not necessary for freezing bank account under Section 102 CRPC. The National Company Law Appellate Tribunal Principal Bench, consisting of Justice Ashok Bhushan Chairperson and Dr. Ashok Kumar Mishra, technical member, has held that there is no conflict between the provisions of Section 17, Capital B, of the Employees Provident Fund and Miscellaneous Provisions Act, 1952, and the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, 2016. The bench allowed the appeal, directing the successful resolution applicant to release the amount due to employees under the provisions of the EPF Act 1952. With this, we've come to the end of today's episode. To continue staying updated about all the legal developments happening in India, subscribe to Live Law and click the bell icon to not miss any videos from us. I'm Tanya Pandey and you're watching Courts this week. Have a great week ahead. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.